Hey guys, what is up? You got Quinn Air here, bringing you another video today. Um, recently, I just uploaded my Sustratum Mechanic Guide, and now we are doing the Aerodrome. And after this video, I uh, there should be a Force of Echoes Guide uh, coming up pretty soon. Uh, so we're just going to go over the mechanics. This is on uh, stage 55 of the Aerodrome, so I, just, I wanted to make sure that I do it on a pretty high four. That way that you guys can see most of the mechanics when they do happen. I won't be able to explain exactly everything, uh, but I'm going to go over the general idea of it. Uh, so you should know the first uh, mini boss's uh, mechanic, but we'll go ahead and go over it in this video. Um, so as you can see here, we have the guy in the middle, and then he'll, um, now normally if you are the first person in this area, it'll be just the, um, one in the middle, uh, but once you walk up to him, he will, there will be three others that spawn. Uh, the, the general idea of this mechanic is, is basically just, you want the bubbles of the three that are around him to match whatever color his is. Um, and all you have to simply do is to CC the, these mobs to try to match up the colors, just like so. We're gonna go over here to this one and we're gonna match his and then we just get this last one to match up. And then once you have matched all three, it's gonna break the shields temporarily. Um, and what you need to do at this point is uh, bur uh, burst down all these mobs as HP. You need to burst them all down. Uh, you wanna to try to do it rather quickly. Uh, once you have done that, um, then you will be able to attack Skippy here in the middle. So yeah, we're just working on this one. As you can see, the bubbles are back up, so now we're gonna have to uh, CC them all again to have them all match the bubbles. So we're gonna go over here. We've got a matching. Uh, we're still working on killing this last one here. Um, and you have to kill all of them. Uh, sometimes they might be left with one HP, so I'm gonna go over here and go do that one. So now we're going to kill him. And, um, Yep, so now we're going to go to the actual first boss here, here. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to, the first boss is the first boss of uh, the aerodrome. Uh, this boss isn't um, too hard. Uh, the mechanics are actually pretty simple, pretty easy. So there is no real specific way of doing this one. Um, and anyone can really tank this. I've tanked this as a warlock. Um, there's nothing really too specific about this one, uh, except for the last phase, the very last phase of this boss. I think it's like the 30% phase can get kind of crazy. Uh, you'll probably see it in this video here. Um, but the general idea is, uh, is the general idea of this is when the his CC bars open up on this boss, you typically just want to stun. Uh, that's the best thing to do because if you do a knockdown, and unless you have a grab, um, <clears throat> if you don't have a grab in the party, and if you do a knockdown. Um, the boss is going to get up really quickly and do like this uh, circular AOE and, and some people will knock backwards and stuff like that. So you typically want to stay from knockdown, stay away from knockdown. I mean, it's not like if you're playing a meme warlock, then you're not going to have any issues with this. Um, but for the other rest of the party members, if they don't have a lot of iframes and all that shit, uh, they're going to get knocked back and um, not have a great time. But yeah, uh, there are certain insignias you can run on this stuff. Um, <clears throat> I mean, just read what the insignias say. Um, <clears throat> just use them. Uh, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and get started here. So uh, this is going to be a kind of a longer video because this is a way longer fight. Uh, especially since I'm doing stage 55. This boss has 122 billion HP. Um, I, we didn't, I didn't stun there because um, you don't have to. It's after he does the dash when his bar is actually open and you want to stun. So now I'm going to grab the boss here with the, the Warlock Grapple. And it's going to do a little bit of the breaker. Uh, and we're just going to continue DPSing him from here. Uh, mainly the, the boss is going to be hitting mainly attacks at the tank. Um, so yeah, and he will do like some backward slashes like that one. Um, opposite side of the tank. But yeah, most of the attacks are going to be directed at the tank here at the start. Uh, all the way up and down until we get to the, the crazy phase. So you'll, you'll see that. Uh, the Really only the mechanic here is to do with these tornadoes that spawn. <clears throat> you'll see here in a moment. I, I can't remember if I do them here or not. Uh, basically, anytime I run this dungeon, I just DPS. But see that red uh, tornado? I'm going to pause it. See this red tornado here? 
Uh, this tornado is going to follow someone. Uh, typically, you would uh, it, you want it to be on a range person. Uh, this person needs to kite the tornadoes into these uh, red uh, blotches, uh, red fiery blotches patches on the floor. Uh, don't walk into them. Uh, but if you kite the tornado onto it, that'll get rid of it. And you can walk into this if you, ha especially if you have the um, the insignia. It's a yellow one. I forgot what it's called. Um, <clears throat> it's a thing, or it's not a yellow one. It's a blue one called combustion. Um, if you walk into this, you'll get a the debuff, and I think that activates the um, that activates the insignia. I'm not quite sure to be honest. Uh, <laughs> I'll mainly just DPS this boss. Um, there is a there is like an actual mechanic that does happen uh, in the later stages. A lot of people don't get to see it mainly because a lot of people don't get up that high in the stages where you actually see him do this mechanic. Uh, but you will see that uh, mechanic done here in this video. But yeah, uh, basically whoever ha whoever the the tornado is following, uh, that person can walk um, through the actual tank or not the tank can walk through the boss. Um, and this tornado will actually do mechanical damage to the the boss. That's basically what that's for, I think. Uh, someone can correct me if I'm wrong. Like I said, I don't really know the mechanics all very well of this boss. Like I like I said, I've mainly just DPS this boss. So, uh, which is basically like I would say eighty, like seventy percent of this fight at least is what that consists of. And uh, now he's going to do a fiery blast towards, uh, I'm not sure if it's exactly towards the tank here, um, but now he's going to do like some of his mechanics. Um, he's going to pull everyone to the center, uh, then shortly after he's going to open up his CC bars. You, you want to stun, I mean if you don't have stuns, and use knockdown if you have to. It's completely fine. And then he's going to do this crazy, these crazy tornadoes that go, um, I think it depends on where the party members are standing, but this shows the paths of the tornadoes of where they're going to go. Um, so you just want to make sure you're not standing in that, because if you're standing in that on this, on this high, you're, you're hundred percent dead, 100%. So just make sure that you move out of the way, SS, do what you got to do, just move, completely move. Do not stand anywhere near those, because those uh, tornadoes will do a ton of damage. And again, he's just doing his basic rotation here. Um, so we're we're getting him down to about fifty percent at this point. Um, yeah, that that mechanic that you saw is not like the crazy crazy mechanic uh, that that'll eventually come later. And again, yeah, so you can just, uh, if you have those tornadoes following you around, you can walk through the boss, and like I said, that'll do mech, mech damage to him, uh, I do believe. Uh, yeah, someone just correct me if I'm wrong on that. I'm pretty sure that's what it does, but um, yeah, as you can see here, I'm mainly just DPSing, but I, uh, I'm i playing a meme lock, so I don't get like knocked down or anything really by any dumb shit, so. Here okay, we're stunning. Uh, you want to grab or do whatever you have to do the boss. Um, and he's going to do a little AOE there, and like I said, most of, it is, most of his attacks are just being directed at the tank. And he does some backward slashes, so you got to be careful of those. Um, yeah, you typically don't want a melee trying to do the tornadoes because the, they're probably going to die, especially on this high of a stage. Um, so yeah. But we're we're getting him down pretty quickly now. We're we've uh, broke the boss. You can do a lot of damage when you break him. Yeah, this this part of the guy is kind of boring. Like I said, the boss doesn't really do much. I mean, he just hits some attacks towards the tank, and that that's about it. Uh, and you got to watch out for those fiery tornadoes, or they will kill your ass. So don't even try running power throughs on this stage, or you get. Uh, but as you can see, he's doing this like fire flamethrower thing towards me. I just use my Z to try to negate some of the damage. So now he's pulling everyone to the center. I think he's about to open up his CC bars soonish. Yep, there's his CC bars. You want to stun here? I'm grabbing the boss and look at this one. Look at that. You got you got to be really careful about this. 
Like, that's some crazy ass tornadoes, dude. Yeah, it, get, it only gets crazier from this point. Like, uh, he's about to do it. Uh, there are mechanics here that he'll do even that's even crazier. Where you have to jump to, um, like, these corners of the room, and then you have to CC the boss at a specific time, which I think he's getting ready to do here. Um, I don't think we really do much of that. Uh, but he does his, like, room-wide AoE here. He does a bunch of smashes. Um, if you don't iframe this, you're going to get slammed back everywhere. So now here comes the point where uh, the tank... So his CC bars are going to open. Uh, the tank needs to be running to a corner of the room somewhere. So there's the CC bars, and the tank's going to move back. And then uh, right before, it, then you got to CC him here. And yeah, we didn't we didn't really get to do much of his mechanic here because uh, we we DPS'd him down quick enough. So and that's pretty much it for this first boss. Like I said, he he don't really do much. But uh, let's go ahead and skip to Maximon. All right, now we're at Maximon, um, and I couldn't really, I know how to tank Maximon a bit, but I, I couldn't really tell you that much. Like, I typically, I do not bother tanking on this high of a level, um, because it uh, can be very stressful, um, because I think after a Maximon, if you, you typically, if I were to tank him, I would do the range, uh, the range check, uh, where you SS after every third attack, but with Maximon, you have to block um, when he comes to dash towards you, if you don't block, he's gonna fuck up everybody, so. So yeah, we're about to start here. This is just normal. Uh, like I said, I don't know much about the tanking. Um, I just know a few, th I just know what I need to know to survive here. He's going to do a lot of uh, those uh, AoEs, just make sure to block those or iframe it. And I'm getting close because um, of the mechanics on the tanking part. But yeah, uh, this, this, is, this is just Maximon's basic rotation until we get down to the 90% phase. He's going to do some slashes and shit towards the tank, he's got to be careful. Here comes another AOE, just block it or iframe it. So now he's gonna, here comes the 90% phase and here comes the clone phase. So I'm gonna, a lot of people don't understand how the clones work, so I'm gonna go over that here in this video. So Maximon is going to point towards a clone. So here he's pointing towards this one. In the 90% phase, the clones can jump clockwise or counterclockwise. And you can, if you're paying attention, you can tell in which way they're jumping. So, um, I'm going to play this, and here the, here they go. And remember, this is the one that he's pointing at. As you can see, he's pointing at this one right here. So, now we're going to watch for where this clone jumps. The easiest way to know, because in the 90% phase and the 60% phase, you have to kill the correct, correct clone. The clones are going to jump five times, but you only have to remember in the in the 90% phase, you just have to remember in the, the second place that he jumped to. So, again, it was this clone, so we're going to watch how he jumps. As you can see, they're actually jumping this way, by the way that they're... See how they're in this uh, in this general direction that they're about to jump because uh, of how their bodies are turned. So yeah, as you can see, there's the this is the clone he pointed to. It's now here. So I'm making my way over to this side because this is going to be the second spot that he lands, and that's going to be the last place that he ends up. Remember, they jump five times, but you only have to remember the second place that the clone jumps to. 
um, in the 90% phase. So as you can see now, this clone is going over there. He's going to make it here, and then his last place is going to be right here, which is why I'm right here. So at this point, um, I should, uh, there's a very specific thing I got to tell you here. So when the, when Maximon does this cone, you'll see coming up here in a second, once he does this cone attack towards the tank, you want to stop DP, stop, stop DPSing Maximon at this point, because if you hit him at any point past this, um, you're going to get, um, rooted. Um, and you're gonna get fucked up really good, and Maximon's gonna, uh, it's gonna drop a, uh, puddle on you. Uh, one of the biggest things I can tell you, especially at this high of a stage, do not stack puddles on top of each other. Um, it's okay if they're, if they're not touching, it's okay, but if they stack, it's game over. Uh, because the, the AoE is gonna do, it, it's gonna do an A, uh, Maximon's gonna do an AoE attack, and it's gonna do a fuck ton of damage. So please, for the love of God, if you see puddles, like, here's one right here, I think... I'm pretty sure that's a puddle. Can't really tell. But if you see a puddle, get away from it. So, yeah, here, uh, this remember, this clone was over here, and they jumped um, this direction that I have doing with my mouse. So uh, the clone jumped here and then here. This is the second place. So uh, that's all you have to remember is the second place that the... And this is only for the 90% phase. The second place that you jump to is the last place it'll be. So... Uh, now, after the clone, after the um, cone attack towards the tank, stop DPSing Maximon and get ready to kill the clone. So once Maximon does the the spotlight like this, they're all spot. All the clones are spotlighted. Uh, here is the clone that we need to attack. So we need to all kill this clone. Uh, Maximon will do this uh, room wide AOE. Make sure that you uh, iframe it or use your Z or whatever your iframe is, uh, so that this doesn't kill you. Uh, you need to kill this clone as quickly as possible, so that's what we're doing here. All right, so now we can go back to um, basically what this does. It does mech damage to Maximon. As you can see, he's knocked down. It says uh, Maximon stand-ins are destroyed and Max Maximon suffers damage. So now we're going to continue DPSing. Maximon's going to do room-wide AOE here. You want to use your uh, re your iframe, your resist, or whatever for that attack, um, and then we're going to go back. It's going to go back into doing the uh, Maximon's going to do his um, basic rotation. And we have to be careful here. Uh, typically you want to try to get close to the boss when he's uh, doing his slams like towards the tank. Uh, that way he can share damage. This is why I do a range check. That way it doesn't happen. But if you do a range check, um, it's going to be a little, a little harder for your melee to be able to do damage. But that's typically how I prefer it. It's a little bit safer in my opinion as long as you're doing what you need to do. Okay, so uh, now after he's done his basic rotation, uh, this is after the 90% phase, after you killed the clone, um, he's going to spawn two clones. Typically you want two people at each clone. Uh, so I'm going to go over here. I got a little bit confused I think on this one uh, because we had decided where people was going to go but that didn't really pan out. But if these clones stack on top of each other, it's gonna be a very very bad time uh but basically how you tank these clones is you uh ss after after every third attack so uh yeah or you know whatever so after the clone does this 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 um rectangular um aoe here uh typically if i were tanking this i would have just ss back the clone's gonna jump towards you um, you want to block that attack when he comes towards you as a warlock. Uh, I don't really have to do that because I can just can just resist everything at the moment. So yeah, and then you just want to keep doing that because it's going to reduce the damage on these uh, clones. Uh, or yeah, well the clones have damage reduction, but doing this is going to make them uh, no longer reduce damage. So now we killed the clones, and Maximon's going to suffer more mechanical damage. And now we're going to go back into this. There was, as you saw there, uh, some of these puddles can randomly drop. If you uh, if you don't, no matter if you didn't hit into a counter or whatever. Uh, so you just have to be careful, and sometimes they will like randomly explode as well. So you just have to be careful about that.
So this is the 60% phase. Um, so now he's gonna point at another clone. Now the difference with this phase is that the clones will jump counter and counterclockwise. So this is the clone that he's pointing at, as you can see. Well, you see now he's, uh, as you can see a sword, he's pointing at this clone. The only thing you have to remember about this clone is that the first place that he jumps to will be the last place that he jumps to. So I'm going to point that out to you. When we're going to watch. We're going to watch. So, whoops. Let me roll that back just a little bit so you can catch it. Um, I wish I could um, slow this down a little bit for you guys. But uh, remember, this is the clone that he's pointing to right here. Um, and as you see, the clones are to jump. And uh, I can already tell you which way they're going to jump. All right, so the clones are jumping in this direction. As you can kind of see how they how they're facing, because they're, see how he's facing towards the towards me, kind of uh, towards the uh, towards the yeah. It's kind of hard to explain, but the clones are jumping this du this direction as you can see with my mouse they're jumping this direction and then the clone that he marked or pointed at was this one here but they've already jumped one time so the clone is now right there that's the marked clone so as you can see and now as you saw I'm gonna roll that back real quick uh, so this is the first clone remember is pointing at this one they're jumping in this direction so as you can see, they jump there. But like I said, uh, if you remember what I said, I said they can jump counterclockwise and ca uh, they can jump clockwise and counterclockwise. So now that the, the first clone jumped this way, they're now going to rotate and go the other way. So yeah, we're going to roll that back one more time. Hopefully you guys uh, get that. So again, yeah, this is the sixty percent phase. There's that clone. So as you can see, how they're jumping, like this is something you have to pay attention to too. Um, like, don't worry about what Maximon's doing. Is if you have a good tank, you're you're gonna be okay. Just you know, pay attention how the clones are jumping. So they're jumping this way. So there's the clone. And you can see kind of how they land and which direction they're jumping. So this one, like I said, here's the marked clone. They're now going to jump back in the opposite direction. So watch. So as you can see, they turned and now they're jumping this way. So now the first, the marked clone is back right where he had began. All right, and now the marked clone is here again, and then they're gonna jump back. He's back over here, and then the marked clone's gonna be here again. The only thing you have to remember is the in the sixty percent phase, the first place that the clone jumps to will be the last place. So when Maximon does his spotlights, which is right here, this is the marked clone. Remember, the marked clone was right here, and they jumped in this general direction. So the marked clone is right there. So yeah, now we're just going to kill this clone. Make sure you Z there for the, um, or not Z, so just make sure you iframe uh, Maximon's attack, the AoE attack that he does. So we kill clone, Maximon's going to suffer more mech damage. So yeah, just to go over it one more time, and the 90, we're going to go over, I'm going to tell you about the 90% phase, and the 90% phase, the clone that Maximon marks, uh, or points to the second place that he jumps to is the last place he'll be and in that 90% um, phase they will only jump in one direction so if, if they jump this way that they'll just keep jumping that way um, if they jump this way it'll just be, keep going that way and the 60% phase is the only time where they'll jump in both directions so in the 60% phase they'll jump uh, they could jump this way or they and then immediately if they jump this way then they're going to jump back and then like, if they jump this way they'll jump back but like yeah just to keep it simple the for the 90% phase the second place that the clone jumps to the last place he'll be 
And in the 60% phase, the first place that the clone jumps to will be the last place that he jumps to. So yeah, Maximum's gonna do his basic rotation here. He's gonna throw down some puddles. Just, um, now that he's gonna jump towards the tank. Because uh, the, the tank is uh, range checking him. And at this point, uh, there is one more phase that will happen. I think that is the 40% phase. Yeah, uh, the 40% phase. So we're gonna keep watching here. So here comes the 40% phase. Or not, we're not, well actually sorry, we're not done with the 60% the phase quite yet. So here comes the second part of where he spawns two clones. You just make sure that your, uh, your specified people go to the clones that they're supposed to be killing. So two people per clone. Um, so yeah, here I'm gonna tank this one. Or I was gonna tank that one. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen this, uh, but yeah. Just make sure you SS on every third attack if you are a tank on this. Or you can, at least that's what I do. It works out pretty well. So yeah, your job here is just to kill the clones. Don't drop, don't stack puddles. See how I got away from that puddle? Get far, like if you see a puddle, get far, far away from it. Okay, so now we killed the clones, and here comes the final phase here in a moment. We're going to make sure you iframe this attack. See, maximum, uh, I dropped a random puddle, so just make sure to get away from those. All right, here comes the 30% phase. And the 30% phase, there will be only one clone. There is no, um, he doesn't, I mean, he will point at the clone, but there's only one. You just have to kill this clone. So in the 30% phase, he will actually spawn a clone every, uh, I, I'm not exactly sure of the time. I think it's like maybe every 30 seconds or every minute. Um, I don't think it's every minute. I think it's like more like every 30 seconds he'll spawn a clone. So we killed this. this is the very first clone of the 30% phase, so kill it, then we go back to Maximon, and this is where uh, it can get a little bit more crazy. Because Maximon, they're going to be rotating all the way around the room a lot, as you can see already. Uh, so we're just trying to DPS Maximon at this point, and then uh, you kind of want to watch out for another clone. Typically, you want to hang out in Discord, that way people can call out. As you can see, there's the second, there's the clone, so now we got to come up here and kill this clone. Uh, you do not want the clone to stack up with Maximon or you're going to have a very, very bad time. So be careful about that. And be sure, like, again, try to stay away from puddles. Uh, that way you don't stack them. Um, and you do get a buff. As you can see right here, this is a buff. So once you kill the clone, or if you're about to kill the clone, get close to the clone and he's going to drop a puddle or a buff there. Um, and you want to get that buff and it, so yeah the the and if as long as you're standing close to the clone that you killed you will get this this buff will refresh and it will stack this is how you do more damage to maximon in this later phase because as you can see he still has 34 billion health and we have uh, just four minutes left and it's gonna be kind of, it's kind of harder to dps when we have to go back and kill a clone every like uh, i don't know 20 seconds 30 seconds it might be every 15. Yeah, so it seems like it might be like every 20, 25 seconds or whatever. So, yeah, here's this clone. Uh, as you can see, I'm tanking it. I don't know if I tank it the whole time. But, yeah, it does that. Then I want to move back a little bit so he charges towards me. Here comes his attack. And, yeah, I didn't get the buff this time. I wasn't close enough. As you can see, my buff did not refresh. I wasn't close enough when uh, the clone died. But, yeah, that's basically it. You just have to... Um, remember all that shit i mean the only thing i can recommend is watch this video a few times and try to like just pay attention on how the clones jump and like i said in the 90 percent phase the first phase of maximon the clone the clone that maximum marks the second place that, that clone jumps to will be the last place that it jumps to and the 60 percent phase the first place that the clone 
that he marks jumps to will be the last place that he ends up being when the spot when Max Mon does the spotlights on all of the clones. Um, and then in the 30% phase, there's only um, one clone, um, and you have to kill, and like I said, he spawns a clone like every 30, 20, 30 seconds or whatever, and you, you have to make sure you kill that clone. Of course, the tank needs to stay on Maximon, the main, the main one. So, yeah, I hope you guys kind of learn something from this. Like I said, it's not like, uh, it's not really too crazy. Once you figure out how it really works, it's really not that hard. And as you can see, there was a puddle stack right there, but luckily, yeah, no, never mind. Yeah, as you can see, there was a puddle explosion. And if you get puddle explosions, it will reduce the damage on Maximon, so you have to be really careful about that. But yeah, hopefully you guys learned something from this video. If you guys have any questions or anything like that, feel free to leave your comments down below. I will get to you as soon as possible. And remember to be sure to like this video and subscribe. See you later.